All right, welcome back to the Acer Team Story Cup. This is Season 3, Axiom versus Millennium. Currently, though, Millennium leads the Series 2-0. You'll be able to see the score up here at all times. I hope this isn't too big. I may reduce the size of this in the future. I don't know, but uh, I try to make it more transparent so it's not as, as, as intrusive, I guess. But spawning in the top left corner of the map from Millennium, it's going to be the Red Protoss player, Baby Knight. And his opponent... Perhaps starting to feel the pressure, I say with a question mark. The Axiom player, spawning blue, spawning Terran, heart. I see me sports brought to you by, let's what is this, Planet Side, Wazdy Keyboard, Cynical Britain, at Axiom Esports. Actually, was the Millennium logo? Oh, they must have forgotten to set the Millennium logo for this one. Well, Millennium is sponsored by like Daily Motion and something else. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, no disrespect. I just don't know their sponsors off the top of my head. Uh, at any rate, this is, uh,. I don't know, another difficult matchup. This is this map in particular is not nearly as bad for Blink. It it looks notorious, and Blink all in certainly do happen on this map. I'm not sure if Baby Knight's the one to do it again. But Hart, he's already seen what Baby Knight can do. And the nice thing about the Acer Team Story Cup is like when you sit on the sidelines, when you watch your opponents, well, you, you know, you know Ryung's playing you're on deck as Hart. You're gonna watch one of the streams, you're gonna keep an eye on how Baby Knight plays. And if he scouts the same information that Ryung does, he'll know what the follow-up will be. So it doesn't it's not exactly cheating by any means. It's just simply studying up on your opponent, getting prepared, and getting ready to play. And why is Java updater no, hang on, I'm sorry if you guys see a black screen for a sec. They said this to me yesterday, I thought I fixed that. Freaking Java updater. It's like, uh, do you guys remember, uh, because uh, <laughs> Grubby was playing and he was getting, like, the, uh, Battlenet updater stuff? Like, I've had that happen to me, too. It's really irritating. I don't know. I updated this thing yesterday because it was happening during the WCS cast, but yeah, if that happens again, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm not sure if that actually shows up or not because I'm not screen regening this time. I am, in fact, uh, just direct streaming the game, so. Ah! Oh, well. Reaper opening coming out of heart. Scouting information is incredibly critical in this matchup, so not at all shocked to see this Reaper. I kind of... <laughs> I always get a giggle and smirk, because there were those times... I can't help but think back to Pulse, amongst others, QXC as well, who would very actually go like four racks, r one reactor, five Reaper production versus Protoss, and even though the Mothership Core was good, it just it wasn't enough to deal with all of them, and if you've got five Reapers coming at a time, even Stalkers can't really fight you. But uh, it's been a long time since we've seen Reapers really be effective in that regard. But can I get up here with that first scout? He is going to be key. Seeing the Nexus coming down this early is actually going to feel a lot better. But there we go. He needs to scout the delayed second gas. That was actually a pretty important catch there. Because uh, right now this doesn't look like it's going to be a faster start gate. Right now it doesn't look like it's going to be a proxy anything. And doesn't look like it will be blink immediately. But again, the key thing is coming for that scout around the 5-6 minute mark. That's when tech usually gets thrown down in a little more decisive manner. Uh, the woes of being Terran. Trying to build a building. But okay, the Reaper going to poke away at the probe. Uh, should be able to kill it actually. First blood. Meanwhile, there's a Stalker in the Mothership Core floating across the map as the follow-up to this. But with the Reactor and Marines and already three barracks of production, Hart is wasting no time preparing for what could uh, be either incredibly early and hard aggression through gateways or a faster Oracle. Either way, four Marines, if micro correctly, can actually deal with the Stalker pretty easily, uh, especially with the Reaper involved there too. But it's important he doesn't lose one of these Marines too early, or two of these Marines too early, because the key thing is going to be having three available for the Mothership Core. There's not a lot in StarCraft 2 that requires exact numbers, but Protoss air units are one of those. You need exactly six for an Oracle and exactly three, bare minimum, to kill a Mothership Core. Even if you micro two Marines perfectly, they're not going to cut it. Uh, so trying to walk through this Time Warp... Ooh, that's actually a really bold use of the Time Warp. But micro one of the low Marines back, we got Marauders already on the way, Concussive Shell's coming out soon. Uh, this... I don't know why could just lift this for safety's sake. Reaper is going to come back to the main though. There's a stalker waiting for him, but that's okay. It won't kill it in time. And he's going to scout the robo facility, which is huge. Uh, but oh, if he gets this mothership core, that will be even bigger. No mothership core. That's a huge investment for Baby Knight to lose this early. Stalker almost, uh, the concussive shell's almost finished. If you can get a shot off of the stalker, he might get another kill. Uh, we'll ugh, complete after the shot goes off. That's really unfortunate. Uh, but the Reaper not only sees this, he lives. He sees two extra gates coming down. He knows the robo's on the way. This might be his opportunity to push, though. With the Mothership Core going down, there's no energy for an overcharge. Even if he builds a new one, it only spawns with 50 energy. It's going to take some time before he can overcharge. 
the pressure into the natural right now could be a big asset for Hart, and he knows it. That's why we see him pushing like this. With a couple of marauders in his army, combined with the concussor shells, the marines can actually catch up to the stalkers and kill them instead of being kited to their deaths. So this army that's coming, while small, is still rather effective. And let's not forget, while well, the stalkers are a big threat, if you can pick off that mothership a second time, Baby Knight may just actually be in a lot of trouble. But here we go. First bit of bio. Storming on in. Stalkers on the front lines. No overcharge available, and he knows it. Probes being pulled into this. Even if, but even with probes being pulled, this is kind of the goal of Heart to do a bit of economic damage. Picks off a probe or two, but actually we see some micro back out of Baby Knight. So he doesn't lose that many. Only about uh, six probes go down here. Well, five, because he lost one on the other side of the map. But if he can get another stalker, if he can get that mothership core, that would be really nice. Uh, of course, for him, his, his basic goal here is to at least force the overcharge. If the overcharge goes off, then they can start dropping the main. But the problem is... Well, the Mothership Corps does, does have enough energy now, he's actually pulling back, so there's no way for him to really force that overcharge out. And Heart disengaging is not a bad idea either. This will give him units back at home to fight with. Now, we've been casting a lot of, just side note, guys, unrelated to this, we've been casting a lot of MMA lately during a stay in Germany, whether it was the Zotac Cups, Go for Starcraft, or the random cups he's been playing in. And I gotta tell you, I have forgotten at this point that observers have stealth, because that guy is so good at seeing them. My big question is, is Hart as good at seeing them as well? Because for Baby Knight to lose an observer, that takes away so much valuable information for him. And a lot of the times, the reason the Protoss players are able to react so perfectly to what you do as a Terran is because they see everything. They know the exact composition, so they can counter it. They know exactly what's going on, and all this is thanks to the observer showing everything going on right now. Blink and weapon upgrades on the way, but at this point, guys, it's not about the blink all in. This is more like a, an actual blink meant for the fighting in the mid game. Whether it's blinking away from stock or fire, whether it's blinking underneath Vikings to kill them before the Colossus gets touched, he's setting up for this quite nicely with those weapon upgrades as well. And there's the Robo Base, so it will be Colossus after this. A big part of the choice to go for Colossus before Templar is the fact that he's already seen five Raxes are down. If you only see three Raxes as a Protoss player, you actually have a bit of, I guess, breathing room to get that Templar tech out, but uh, he, he knows he needs a Colossus, and the emphasis there is on needs. A couple of Hallucinate Phoenixes scouting around the map, too. Uh, make sure there's no other awkward attacks coming, but one nice controlled stim. This will allow the Marine to get in and see what's going on and actually get out alive? No, no, no. Uh, factory out of heart actually may land in the blind spot if it, <laughs> if this happens this will be like the most delayed proxy widow mines ever but hold the phone never mind with the pylon coming down he's gonna see this coming uh, but of course if he brings some stalkers back to, to uh, attack this this may prompt an attack at a heart towards the main and baby knights are you gonna risk it man this is just a very expensive overlord right now a very expensive overlord <laughs> But okay, pushing forward here with the Marines and the Marauders once again. He doesn't actually have the pushing capabilities he did once before. And it's not even because of the Colossus. And he sees the Chrono Boost on the Extended Thermal Lens, so he knows that's available. It's more so because there's so many Zealots here. These are going to soak so many hits. They don't have the plus one armor. That's kind of the quote-unquote OP mode. But uh, they will still take quite a bit to go down. Zealots with 150 health do soak a lot of damage. Uh, either way, backing up a little bit, scans forward to make sure it's clear, doesn't see the Colossus, so sees a window of opportunity to go in here, he will connect to a lot of these stalkers, blinking back though, it is Baby Knight, gonna try and retain them, but the Kessler shells are too good, with no extended thermal lance, guys, please keep in mind, Marauders have the exact same range as the Colossus, so he can turn around and focus this down if he wants to, but it will cost him his army, so rather than saying, alright, I'll get a free kill, or not a free kill, I'll get a very costly kill, I will just completely disengage, he's got some Vikings with this too, the army for heart right now is not looking too bad, but it's not enough to overwhelm Baby Knight, and he knows it, so he wants to play it safe than sorry. Because every Terran player has made that mistake at some point in their career where they think, okay, I'll win this fight, but then they lose the war to the counterattack. Again, he doesn't really know if there's pylons up here. There could be a Zealot warp in coming sometime soon. But he does have a third base up over his opponent. And quite frankly, as a Terran player, it's not easy to get that third base going. So already mining from it pretty efficiently. The best way to defend this base is not going to be with a ton of bunkers. It's not going to be by putting a thousand missile turrets down. It's by simply putting on aggression and making sure Baby Knight can never push. Speaking of Static D for a sec, is anyone else incredibly pissed off? You can't build Perdition turrets as a Terran player? That bothers me to no end. Missile turrets are cool, but I would love to get a Perdition turret. Because look, there's there's uh, Spore Crawlers and Spine Crawlers to shoot up and down. A cannon shoots both ways as well, but a missile turret only shoots up. I mean, you can make the argument of bunkers, sure, and I won't take that away from you. But I'd love to be able to make Perdition turrets. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, maybe this sounds foreign because you never played the single player game. It's a, a turret that hides underground, burrowed, until it needs to attack, and then it shoots flames out like a fire bat. 
but it's stationary and its range is limited. Either way, I think it'd be so cool to have that in multiplayer. Maybe imbalanced, but you know, I can always dream. I like the Ghost Academy coming up right now as well. A lot of the times Terran players lately, you'll see, especially in Pro League as well, they're kind of starting to skip out on Ghosts, trying to win with a lot of Marauders and Vikings and just trying to bully their way in. But the reality is, if you drop an EMP, you essentially strip half the health off of anything it hits. Uh, even more so when it comes to Immortals and Archons, of course. But uh, for the Zealots to lose 50 of their shields, for the Stalkers to lose 80 of their shields, for the Colossus to lose... I well, I don't think you lose all 150 from one EMP. I could be wrong. Can't think of the damage off the top of my head. But either way, it does a lot. Actually, I think it does do 150. Uh, Leaving you only with the shields, your, your basic, no shields, only health, and of course the uh, Protoss armor available. So getting the ghost out right now is going to be really nice. It, it takes that less of a volley to kill a Colossus, which means your Vikings get a little more damage to him before they get blinked upon and killed. The army for Baby Knight is lower in supply, guys, but it's definitely good on effectiveness. He's got a lot of splash damage here, and Hart doesn't have that amount of Vikings to so just kind of A move and auto win. He does have a lot of Vikings though. 10 is a really nice count, and that's where he wants to be. Especially with some EMPs and two more coming up behind this. He's gonna be able to do a ton of damage to Baby Knight. But Baby Knight as well, let's not forget, his army's built the way it is because it's expecting this to come. What I am a little concerned about though is the stalker count isn't really that high anymore. He did lose a lot in that last engagement. Uh, normally you've got, probably I'd say a good six or seven more stalkers than 14 that, that he currently has, so that you can sort of blink forward and just aggressively pick off the Vikings, but oh my god, the SCVs were pulled! Oh, we watched Bunny lose a game doing this exact same move! Time Warps can really shut this down, Force Fields can deny this, but there's actually not a lot available. SCVs in the front lines are meant to take these hits. Goes for the third base, and Art, he hasn't pulled every worker on the field, but this is pretty damn all in. He has to win with this push, or at least cause some very critically severe damage. SCVs can always be put back, if survived, but the idea is that on the front line to soak the hits. Those first three Colossus Follies killing all the SCVs instead of the Marines is huge. The Vikings try to connect to this, the EMPs start going off, the Archon has no health. Ten health is all it has, goes down so quickly. Marines twice sideswiping the colossus have fallen only stalkers remain the scv pull did its job the vikings can land beyond this too and do a little bit more damage but camp and waiting for that colossus instead natural base in a lot of trouble probes are pulled but heart will bring it back for axiom now two to one Woo!